So let's wrap up 2020 together and leave 2021 wide open for possibility, hope, and new beginnings. Many times, it's not the situation that causes our life to feel a certain way, but the meaning that we give to it. That's one of the most powerful lessons I've learned this year and hope today's exercise can help you create the closure you need and give you the peace to look forward to. Many people want to navigate life with peace and joy, but struggle to connect to their intuition. They find themselves overwhelmed, burned out, and frustrated. My name is Francesca Phillips, and I'm obsessed with spirituality and psychology and how the two can intersect to help you live a successful and intuitive life. I believe each of us can accomplish amazing things through balance and healthy habits instead of burnout. Consider this your go-to resource for where spiritual wellness and mindful productivity meets practical wisdom. If you're craving positivity and want to know how to find the answers within, instead of searching endlessly without, then you're in the right place. Get ready to feel supported and inspired. This is the Good Space Podcast. You're listening to the Good Space Podcast, episode number 29, how to end 2020 on a positive note. Before we dive in, I want to give my warm appreciation to our reviewer of the week, Engineering Mama, and they say, This podcast has brought so much clarity as I've looked at my interactions with myself and the people and world around me. I really like the episode with Dr. Benjamin Hardy because I have never felt like I fit into a specific box and I shouldn't. Can't wait to listen to more. Engineering Mama, you are so right. You don't fit into any box and I love that you're leaning into that. You inspire me with how you aim to be aware and I'm so happy you're part of the Good Space community. If you want to be highlighted in an upcoming episode and help further the mission of The Good Space, make sure to subscribe and give us a review on Apple Podcasts so I can then highlight your review in an upcoming episode. It only takes a minute. You can pause the episode and come right back. Make sure to screenshot this episode on your phone and tag us on your Instagram story at findyourgoodspace, hashtag the good space, to let me know that you're joining in today as you know that I love to share those screenshots on our stories too. Friends. We made it. We're heading towards the end of the year, and today's episode is going to help you make the transition as smooth and inspiring as possible. I took myself through the process I'm going to show you before recording this, and I'll share some of my answers as examples for each step. Before we start, though, to say this year turned out different than most of us expected is an understatement. In 2020, we've had to deal with national emergencies like the COVID-19 pandemic, which is still raging as of this recording. We had to change our life completely by adjusting to quarantine, which meant no restaurants, commuting to offices or traveling, feeling the panic as grocery shelves became empty and the tension in the air skyrocketed, not to mention toilet paper becoming as valuable as gold. That one's hilarious. The world was literally forced to pause and hunker down. Then we had the fault lines of social movements slip into earthquakes of change, Black Lives Matter being a big name this year among others. The grand finale, so far at least, was the presidential election. It was heated, intense, and gave us the chance to learn how to love our neighbors when we found out they voted differently than we did. I know this was a big struggle for me. And what I hope we can do after this life-altering year is to give it greater meaning, a higher meaning that's helpful and purposeful. Every incident we've experienced is a chance to go deeper, more authentic, to check in with how we're living our lives and to make changes as needed. But first, real quick, there are some positives of 2020. And here's how I'm interpreting the lessons found in the events of this year. It was a chance to be leaders and compassionate friends, to show we're tough and can make a small sacrifice for the well-being of the world, our neighbors, the elderly, and chronically ill. It was a chance to become creative again, to figure out who we were without errands, parties, or traveling, to sit still. Who are you without teaching at church or running to the dry cleaners and Target? How do you manage when every day seems to feel the exact same? And I feel you. I hear and see you. This was no easy year, but you are so tough and strong. And after everything that's happened this year, you're here. You're listening to this podcast because you're hopeful for the new year and know that your mindset matters. And we all need that boost and that support and to hear something better to go into the new year with. So good for you. The world is so lucky to have you. 
So let's wrap up 2020 together and leave 2021 wide open for possibility, hope, and new beginnings. Many times, it's not the situation that causes our life to feel a certain way, but the meaning that we give to it. That's one of the most powerful lessons I've learned this year and hope today's exercise can help you create the closure you need and give you the peace to look forward to. Rituals and transitions give us a way to process better, and when we take them away, it's harder to feel connected to the moments in our lives. Make sure you can be in a quiet place away from kids or pets and allow yourself to relax into each step. Preferably, you can be at home, light a candle, and crack open a notebook. Consider this your personal sacred ritual to thank this year for what it taught you and to release anything that won't serve you in the new year. If you prefer taking walks, then have a fresh note open on your phone to write down your responses to each step. And there will be some relaxing music, so I don't want to have you fall asleep either. So maybe not the best when you're driving, but if you think you can stay awake through it, awesome. So the first step to releasing 2020 and going into 2021 on a positive note is to do the zipper of light exercise. This was one I spoke about in a previous episode on energetic shielding. We'll link that in the show notes for you if you want to listen to it after. And this will help you clear your energy so you're more open and receptive to releasing and receiving. Sit comfortably, take a few deep breaths, then close your eyes. And if you're walking, you can still take a few deep breaths and then quietly observe what's immediately in front of you and in your peripheral and just keep taking deep breaths. So the first thing to do is imagine you have a shield around your energy field, like a solid ring of light being zipped tight around you with no holes in its boundary. Step two, say to yourself or something similar, release anything that may have latched on to me, that I've taken on, that's not mine, and that doesn't serve me. Release it back to be recycled for the greater good. Then the third step is to say to yourself, Please bring back to me anything that I may have lost today or disconnected from for some reason and bring it back to me and make me whole and complete or whatever feels good to you. Step four is imagine yourself zipping up the solid ring of light again. Now that you're clear and aligned, let's move to the next step. Step two, gratitude. What are you grateful for from this year? Write down anything good that's happened. What accomplishments are you proud of? What new things did you try? It could be a mindset change, an obstacle you overcame, a risk you took, or a moment you felt stronger or more loving than you expected. Feel free to pause this for a minute or two to write them down and then press play when you're done. A few of the things that I'm grateful for from this year definitely was the fact that I went to HBX Live at the beginning of the year in Los Angeles. It literally happened right as COVID hit and I was so nervous about going and I'm so glad I did it. And then going to Disney World with my husband, Matt, for his birthday in January. And we actually almost moved that to April when my birthday was and we decided, you know what? We're just going to go for it because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And it literally was the best lesson about that because by April, obviously, we couldn't have gone. So that was really special. And a few other things were hiring and paying in full for a coach, which I was terrified to do. It took me forever to get to that point. But the fact that I did it and was able to support the whole endeavor was amazing. 
I'm grateful for the peace that New York City has experienced this year, just being able to enjoy it with other locals and the fact that I was able to reframe how I think of obstacles because they used to paralyze me so much, but this year I had some big breakthroughs with that. There's a lot of great things to be grateful for, and I'm so grateful. Okay, so step number three, vision. How do you want to feel in 2021? Are there any results you want to create with God, universe? Take the time to really envision what you'll be like a year from now and what you hope to be feeling or saying. Some feelings that came to mind for 2021 for me was aligned, free, flowy, happy, abundant, receptive, open, peaceful, simple life. And then I have a few other things that felt good to my heart. One of the results that comes to my heart that I would love to create for next year is growing the Good Space community and reaching more people who would benefit from what we're doing and the message we're creating and a few other things as well. Step number four is to release Having really captured that vision for next year, what from this year do you want to release? Think of anything you've resisted, feared, tried to control, feelings or situations you avoided. Think of feelings or mindsets you can't bear holding on to any longer. What can you adjust or change in your life to actually make it happen? I felt overwhelmed for most of this year, and it wasn't until my coach asked, why? How can you make it so you're not? For some reason, that felt like an obvious question, but one I didn't take seriously until that moment. That's when I realized how stuck in fear and victimhood I'd been. Instead of asking how to fix my situation, I accepted it as my life and kept wallowing in the loop of overwhelm. Sometimes all that is stopping us from making aligned, life-changing action is asking the right questions. So what's stopping you? How can you work to make a difference? The idea is to write down anything you believe won't help or serve you to design the life you envision in 2021. Anything that would stop you from fully embracing and engaging next year. A few of mine that I wrote down is fear dictating my decisions and energy, my fear of change, caring about what others think of me or how I come across, and thinking that experts know better than me and my path has to follow theirs. The fifth step is to receive. Now that you know what you want to release, let's decide what we want to receive. This is when we'll choose our word of the year. A word that helps you feel aligned and focused on making the deeper change you crave the most. I find it's more easeful and flexible than making New Year's resolutions. We often don't know exactly what we need or the best path, so we have to allow ourselves the flexibility to listen to our inner wisdom and make changes as needed. I'm reading President Obama's newest book, and it's so interesting learning how through trial and error, that's where he became president or got into politics in the first place. You could say his word has always been community. Everything that he's done throughout his life ties back to that idea. And his goal was to bring people together and make positive change. He tested doing community organizing, then being a lawyer and on and on until he landed in politics. And had he forced himself to have unwavering goals, he may not have made the difference he had. And you can definitely find similar themes with other people as well. This is the book that I just happened to be reading during this recording. But the idea is to know what's most important to you first and foremost. Like what is so important for you as a value, as something that's deep within, and then staying focused on that and ebbing and flowing until you feel most aligned. Here are some example words of the year. Flexibility, surrender, feeling good, ease, peace, simplicity, release, bravery.
Once you pick your word, have it written down on a post-it or print it on a nice paper and keep it visible. That way, whenever you come across a situation that challenges that word, you can challenge yourself back to either say yes or no. And as of this recording, my spirit is leaning towards release for my word of the year, letting go of control, of needing to seek approval or advice, and letting my intuition lead the way. And the final step, number six, is once you've gone through this, it's time to celebrate. Give yourself a hug or dance or place your hand on your heart and feel what you've just done. We don't pause and celebrate nearly enough. I hope this ritual has allowed you to release what you no longer need, align to a vision that feels good, and receive what's meant to be yours in the new year. You deserve it all. You deserve everything that you desire. I'd love to hear your responses and what you felt after doing this. So leave a comment on our website. We have show notes where you can leave comments at the bottom of the post. So leave it there or you can email me and that will also be in the show notes. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week or weekend or whenever you're listening to this and just know that you are meant for wonderful things. And I hope that this gives you that clarity and that closure so that you can go into the new year just ready to go. All right, sending you lots of love and gratitude. Now it's time for an affirmation. I release anything that no longer serves me and choose to follow my intuition to unlimited possibilities. If you found today's tips inspiring or thought-provoking, share it right now on social media and make sure to tag me at Francesca A. Phillips or at Find Your Good Space and also weigh in in the comment section at findyourgoodspace.com. You can find links in the show notes. And if you have a spiritual or mindfulness problem that you want me to unpack on an upcoming The Good Space episode or an awesome manifesting story you want to share, give my podcast phone line a ring right now at 917-719-0867. Also, don't forget to download my free morning routine guide. It's what helped me reduce my anxiety, increase productivity, and so much more. The link to everything I mentioned is in the show notes. See you soon.